Brandon Yeager is coming to us from the Appalachia, Ohio, where he and his partner Michelle operate Shagbark Seed and Mill Company. You guys might have had some of the chips that have been out there that are outstanding. Um, and so he's here to bring us the story behind the flavor. Hey, everybody. It's uh, really humbling and inspiring to be here. It's great to be standing up, too. Um, thanks for inviting me to tell you all about how building a tortilla factory in Appalachian, Ohio can help fuel a staple food revolution. Uh, if you drove to the gathering, like I did, you probably saw a lot of corn fields, either recently harvested or drying down in the field. Um, now, I didn't grow up looking at corn fields. I grew up in Levittown, Pennsylvania, the birthplace of suburban sprawl, the cultural dead zone of mediocrity between vibrant cities and agriculture. Um, I love you, Mom. Uh, come, to, come to think of it, that actually may be the source of my uh, existential anxiety about the food system. So, um, but I digress, or do I? Um, more than 90% of the corn that you saw on that trip was GMO corn. Uh, the state of Ohio, corn covers 4 million acres, uh, and the U.S. grows a total of 84 million acres of GMO corn. I just found out that that is uh, an area roughly three times the size of the state of Kentucky. Ew. Um, so, you know, that's corn, people. That's the amazing grain staple food that uh, built sophisticated societies before the marauding conquistadors outlawed it and before we did who knows what to it. Um, so I guess you guys got a chance to taste the tortilla chips in the last few days. Oh, good. You may not know, we tried to make sure everyone knew, but they're made from Ohio-grown organic corn, which, by the way, means both non-GMO and non-chemical. Yeah. So you may not also realize, but it might not be a surprise, these chips have been a driver for Shagbark's growth from $11,000 to $400,000 in four years. Um, but the thing is, we didn't set out to make the best tortilla chip in the world. Uh, I'm a food activist in Appalachian, Ohio, a region rife with chronic poverty, rural food deserts, an epidemic of diet-related illnesses, and a history of resource extraction. Uh, but back in 2008, whether I was at home or traveling around the country, I couldn't help but notice a gap in the locavore diet, and it was beans and grains, the staple foods. You can feel the ex existential anxiety growing. And uh, because let's face it, when there are food riots around the world, it's not because of a dearth of curly leaf kale of the heirloom variety. It's bread, corn tortillas, rice, beans, chapatis, uh, the staple foods that have been so important to a healthy human diet for thousands of years. It's also the lion's share of the U.S. agriculture, which means there's a lot of great opportunity for local food economies, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. So Michelle and I planted test plots of high-nutrition beans and grains on borrowed land with borrowed tractors, and uh, then the calls started coming in. People were ready to buy what we grew, farmers were ready to grow, but the infrastructure that's required to bring that from farm to table is largely lost across the country. Um, so now our bean and grain agriculture looks roughly like that. So in 2010, we started Shagbark Seed and Mill. Uh, this is a certified organic processing facility that partners with small family farms in our region, creates a replicable model for regional staple food independence. Yeah. Thanks. You can see the existential anxiety coming down a little bit. Okay. So today, Shagbark's team includes two full-time and 12 part-time employees. We partner with eight family farms to grow nine different grains and beans from heirloom popcorn to buckwheat. Uh, we'll, sh this year, Shagbark will turn uh, 150 tons of crop into products from dry beans to heirloom polenta to pasta. Uh, for farmers markets, grocers, restaurants, and food access programs throughout Ohio. And by the way, the kid is not on the payroll yet. <laughs> but back to tortilla chips, a snack that is now more popular in the U.S. than potato chips. But I bet 
you would gladly give up eating them if that, if that simple act could somehow end GMO and corporate chemical agriculture, right? Well, the thing is, you don't have to. Shagbark <laughs> chips were the number one selling grocery item in the opening week of a Columbus Whole Foods store, and it's still two years later consistently in the top five. Yeah, and we've added, uh, already this year added 30 stores, and this next month, 17 Kroger stores in Columbus will be adding our products to their natural food section. And I guess that means that the rest of the store is the unnatural food section. This product represents 62% of Shagbark sales. Seriously, folks, uh, these hotcakes are on the brink of uh, becoming a controlled substance. We, we, uh, we call them our gateway products for a reason. So what's the problem, you ask? Well, our corn is made into chips in the opposite corner of the state right now, and we want to bring that production in-house. There's a lot of advantages, uh, including cash flow, quality, profitability, reducing the carbon footprint, and creating jobs in the poorest region of the state. In Columbus, I recently met uh, Avelino Paz, uh, who has produced tortillas for 40 years. He and his family are ready to sell us their used equipment uh, and help us with installation and startup. I've already begun working one day a week to train in their facility. This equipment would expand our product line to include fresh tortillas, which already promised $40,000 in sales. Uh, I feel like Emma Goldman because if I can't eat these tortilla chips, I guess I don't really want to be part of your revolution. So we're looking for $275,000 and let's, change, let's make a staple food revolution one bag at a time of the best tortilla chips in the world. Thanks. Thanks, Brandon.